Hello everyone, Torx here. In this video, I'm going to show you how to install a graphics or video card, same thing, into a desktop computer. Now, if you're watching this, you are most likely in one of these three situations. One, your computer currently doesn't have a graphics card in it, and you want to install it. Two, your computer does have a graphics card in it, but you are swapping it out with a new one. Or three, your computer has onboard or otherwise known as integrated video, and you want to install a dedicated video card in it and use that instead. Each situation has a slightly different method to it, but they're pretty similar and straightforward. Regardless, I'm going to show you all three ways in this video. Let's get right to it. So the very first thing we want to do when installing a new graphics card, or should I say before installing a new graphics card, is to make sure we have the driver available to us. If this is a new build and you don't yet have a way to obtain a driver online because your computer doesn't work yet, that's okay. We can get it after the physical installation. It's just a little easier when you get it beforehand. To do this, go to your new graphics cards chipset manufacturer's website. Generally, it's either going to be NVIDIA or AMD. Locate your card's driver. This is really easy and user-friendly to do. Make sure you also select your operating system. Now, if you're new to this and this is not a newly built PC and you currently have graphics, how do you know if your computer has a dedicated graphics card or integrated graphics? Really simple. Where do you normally plug your monitor in? Is it in the motherboard right here or is it down here in one of the expansion slots? If in the motherboard, you've got integrated graphics. If down here, you have a dedicated graphics card. So what does this mean? Well, if you're using integrated graphics, there isn't really anything you should have to do. But if you have a dedicated graphics card in your system and you are upgrading to a new one, you're going to want to uninstall your current card's driver. To do this, whether you're using Windows 7, 8, or 10, go into the device manager located in the control panel. Click on display adapters and the graphics card's driver will appear. Now the reason you're seeing double in this example is simply because this card I'm currently using happens to be a dual GPU, meaning it's technically two video cards in one. Regardless, uninstalling either of the drivers will uninstall both. If you want an even more clean, fail-safe way of uninstalling the old driver, use the free program known as Display Driver Uninstaller, or DDU, which I have linked you to in the description box as well as a guide on how to use it. But generally speaking, uninstalling with Windows shouldn't cause any problems. However, if you do experience issues after the new installation, don't worry, just redo the uninstall with DDU. You'll be alright. When the driver is uninstalled, you'll still be able to see your screen because your graphics will be run by your operating system's default video driver. However, it will look like crap, but that's okay, we're gonna fix that in just a moment. Once the driver is uninstalled, shut off the computer, unplug all the cables, and turn off the power supply switch. And if you want to be extra safe, hit the power button a couple of times afterward. This will release any stored energy that could potentially be inside of the computer. It's a little unsettling. Sometimes you'll do this and you'll see the computer light up and the fans will start to spin for about half a second. Now remove the front side panel. Most cases have two Phillips head screws on the side over here that you just simply unscrew. And afterward, you place your hand on the panel, apply some light pressure, pull back, and lift off. But this case is weird. It has this big flat head that you rotate a bit and the whole thing just lifts off. Either way, once the case is opened, we're ready to remove the old graphics card, if you had one. If you have onboard graphics, you'll completely skip this step, but you can continue to watch if you wish. Otherwise, skip on over to the timestamp you see on screen right now. The first thing you're going to want to do is to remove the power cables attached to the card, if it has any. Some cards won't. PSU cables are generally all the same. They have a little switch on them that you need to pinch, and while doing so, lift the cable off. They can be a little stubborn, so don't be shy. Apply a reasonable amount of pressure to the card if you must. This fat glutton of power known as the NVIDIA GeForce GTX 690 has two 8-pin PCIe power connectors feeding it. For reference, that's a lot of power. Most cards, even high-end ones these days, won't require that. This thing's all the way back from 2012, but it was one of the most powerful graphics cards in the world at the time. However, out with the old, in with the new. Sorry, girl. Once the cables are out, let's move on to the screws. This happens to be a dual-slot card, meaning it takes up two expansion slots. A single-slot card will take up, you guessed it, three. No, just kidding, one. Either way, get these screws unscrewed. In just about every single case, they too will be Phillips heads. Since the screws are out, there's only one thing left to do. The slot the card is in will have a little switch at the end of it. Sometimes you have to push it in while lifting the card out, and other times, like this one, you have to push it down and it will toggle. The card will be released from its clutches. Once this has been accomplished, carefully lift the card out. You might have to use a slight bit of force, but if it's not coming out at all, be careful, make sure everything is unscrewed and disengaged. It shouldn't be too difficult to get out. Try shimmying it a bit. We're now ready to install the new card. Oftentimes brand new ones will have covers on their teeth to help prevent damage. Remove the covers. Also, try to refrain from touching the teeth. You don't want your disgusting human finger oils drenching them. And <laughs> Sorry, I had a rough day at work. Now make sure that the PCIe X16 slot switch, if it has one, is disengaged. Meaning, if it has a switch like this one does, it is pushed down. Some motherboards are a little different. They may have a button that does not require it to be pushed inward while installing the card, but from my experience, most motherboards will have this setup. This will lock it into place once the card is in. But again, it depends on your MOBO. Also, if this is a new setup and you did not take out an old card prior, there will be expansion slot plates that must be removed. 
Oftentimes they'll be like this, held with screws. Unscrew them and lift out. In other rare cases, especially with OEM computers, OEM basically meaning pre-made desktops, there won't be any screws, but rather you'll literally just have to tear out the plates. Push inward, wobble them back and forth enough, and eventually they'll break off. I think they're aluminum, which is pretty soft. Line up the teeth of the card with the slot, as well as the metal plates with the expansion slots of the case. It's really easy to do, just be gentle and be slow. Ah, uh, I was just about to make a really off-color joke there. Sorry, that was my inner 12-year-old coming out. You'll know when it's all in place. Once it is, gently but assertively push down. You should feel it click into place if it has been aligned correctly. It will wobble slightly, but we can remove that by screwing it in. If the case had screwed in expansion slots, reuse those screws. If they were disposable plates that you had to break off, get a pair of large threaded screws. These are the exact same types of screws used to screw in hard drives. Again, if it's a single slot card, you'll only need one. Once screwed in, the wobbling should be reduced. It's okay if it wobbles a little bit. The whole point is that it won't rattle or fall off. Now, if your card requires any additional power connectors, connect them to it. Some will require a single 6-pin PCIe connector, some will require two, some will need 8-pin PCIe connectors, some will need a mix of both. Like most power supplies, this one has breakaway connectors, meaning you can transform a 6-pin into an 8-pin like shown here. This card requires a single 8-pin, so line it up and click it in. The best way to do this is to match up the unique pattern of the connector with the pattern of the slot. There's only one way it can go in push, and you should hear a little click, ensuring it's in place. That's it, the graphics card has been physically installed. Now all that's left to do is plug the monitor into it, as well as all of the other cables, obviously. Turn the computer on and install the driver. How do we install the driver? Easy, just run it. Open it up, and it will guide you through it. Again, if this is a brand new computer you built and you didn't obtain the driver yet, refer back to this timestamp. For quickest, easiest results, especially if you're new to this, just go with the express installation, and it will do the rest. It usually, if not always, will require a restart. Restart the computer. If everything's functioning properly, and you did everything correctly, that's it. The graphics card has physically and digitally been installed, and you're all set. Thanks for watching. Enjoy your awesome new graphics, and if you have any questions, comment below and I'll get back to you as soon as I can. Also, let me know if you have any video requests. I'll keep them in mind. Torx out.